YouTubers, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the Hot Lead Zone. We're at the range today and we're doing the Elmer Keith Celebration Day. We're using his favorite load of 22 grains of 2400 powder and his 245 grain Keith hard cast semi wad cutter bullet from a Lyman 4 cavity mold. And we're using his favorite revolver, the Smith & Wesson Model 29, but this is the stainless steel version, so it's a 629, but this is his favorite barrel length, 4 inches. We're using that revolver, but we're also using the Ruger Super Blackhawk, which actually came on the market earlier than the Smith & Wesson did, because Ruger did a little bit of surreptitious spying and found out about the 44 Magnum cartridge and loaded the revolver, it got it on market before the Smith. And we're also using a Thompson Center contender rigged up with a 16 and a half, 16 and a quarter inch barrel to be legal and it's got the rifle buttstock on it. So we're going to shoot these on the Elmer Keith Celebration 22 grains, 2400 pounds. And here are the loads we're using. This is Keith's load, 240 5 grain semi wad cutter Keith bullet, 22 grains of 2400 powder. Magnum primers. And here's 22 grains of 2400 powder, but it's got 240 grain jacketed hollow point bullet loaded. It's a hand load. And here to represent factory is PMC 240 grain jacketed hollow points full factory magnums. So here's the Keith load in the Smith & Wesson model 629. Just imagine if this were blued steel. Now well, let's go with the Ruger Super Blackhawk. Well, I got three of them in, a, in the same hole, but the other three are not distinguished. The ejection is good, and all the empties look fine. There's the primers, and they ejected fine out of both the Smith and the Ruger. Now the Thompson Center Contender.
got your 22. Yep. All white. Cool. We'll have to come over and yeah. wow. trade you some ammo. <laughs> yeah. I got some to try out. I don't know which ones you have already. Well, that contender will shoot a one whole group if I do my part as it is. Looks like about a one and a quarter inch group for five shots, whereas the pistols, uh, the Ruger Super Black Hawk did the second best. And the, unfortunately, I didn't shoot the Smith very well, but that might just be because I shot that one first. So there's five rounds with that uh, Thompson Center short rifle setup. And I think if I shot better, if I just took my time a little bit, I, it would have been better. And here's the first group I shot with the Smith & Wesson. Yeah, I was a little bit all over the place. That was me, not the gun. Because then I shot the Ruger and it started to settle down a little bit. And now I uh, shot the, the Smith & Wesson 629 again. You see two of them went in the same hole. So we're starting to settle down with that uh, heavy case load. Takes a little getting used to if you haven't been shooting them in a while. But then the target change, uh, the buzzer went off, so I couldn't put the other two rounds in there. So uh, two more shots to finish that five-shot group with the uh, Smith & Wesson 629. And so the uh, Smith & Wesson 629 shoots that load pretty well. Uh, once again, this is shooter error. I think the Smith & Wesson 629 could shoot a one-hole group uh, if the shooter does his part or her part. So today I was talking to one of the range masters at the range and... Uh, this other shooter named Tom comes up to me and says, Hey, you're Fortune Cookie. Saw your video last night. Well, Tom, uh, it was nice meeting you today. And uh, here's a special hi to Tom. And uh, good day to you, sir. We're done for the day. And uh, that's quite a bit of empty brass. More magnums than I tend to want to shoot. But uh, for uh, Elmer Keith Remembrance, it was worth it. So YouTubers, for your information, the Keith Load shot out of the Super Black Hawk 7.5 inch barrel at 1430 feet per second. Now it shot out of the 4 inch 629 at 1183 feet per second. And out of the Thompson Center Contender 14 inch barrel with a 2 inch extension, but it's not the barrel, the actual barrel is 14 inches, shot 1,570 feet per second. But very comfortably, out of the Thompson Center short rifle. You can shoot that one all day. But out of the handguns, they were a bit on the punishing side on the hand. After 200 rounds, it was time to call it quits. Now this is the Keith load of 22 grains of 2400 powder but instead of the Keith bullet these are loaded with Hornady 240's these are old design they don't have this design anymore as far as I can recall but the velocity on these was out of the Super Black Hawk 7.5 inch barrel it shot 1473 feet per second the 629 4 inch shot 1402 feet per second. And out of the Thompson Center Contender 14 inch barrel, it shot 1677 feet per second. So pretty impressive. If you want to, want to hunt with uh, jacketed hollow points, this wouldn't be a bad way to go. Now these Keith bullets are already well regarded in terms of hunting efficiency. They've shot every kind of game on earth. And Elmer did some great work with it. Great for hunting. Great for target shooting. Great for any kind of use that you might want to put it to. So, uh, YouTubers, there you go. And you see, after we shot all that lead, we shot the jacketed. And you see how clean the chamber throats are as I'm going each one of these. There's the one under my thumb. And you can see how clean that is. 
just by shooting a few magnum rounds at the end of the day. Then notice how clean the forcing cone is, and that's very important. Now let's look at the barrel. There you go. Nice and clean all the way back to the forcing cone. Now I didn't do the front of the cylinder. We just wait until I guess a little dirtier next time before we do that. So this is the same gun that was Elmer Keith's favorite gun, except his was blue. But it's the same configuration, 4 inch barrel. Smith & Wesson Model 29 or 629. Now the Ruger got the same treatment. See how clean those chambers are? And then the chamber throats right here right there right there just enough light to see that there's nothing there except some lint and that's a great way to end the day save yourself some trouble and shoot some jacketed rounds through there at the end of the day. Good to touch off a few magnums anyway. Never a bad idea. But you'll save yourself a lot of work. Now look at the forcing cone. You're not going to get the forcing cone any cleaner than that. Now there's even a little copper in there. You see that? We won't worry about that. But here is your barrel. So here is your barrel. Just a little bit of lint down there, that's all. But look at those, follow those rifling grooves back. And there's some lint back there. That's clean. And there is that Thompson Center barrel that I promised showing you. You can see it from both sides. Cleaned up so nice. Just dandy. Good day at the range. Celebrating Elmer Keith 44 Magnum Load. 22 grains of 2400 powder and his Keith semi-wide cutter bullet.